Hello everyone, in this tutorial we shall be doing some network forensics. I have in the last tutorials shown you how to capture some forensic artifacts from the uh, from the from the different uh, media such as uh, RAM, such as uh, the pen drives and many other sources of uh, information. So in this tutorial we are going to capture or to cuff some information from the network using the tool called Wireshark which is actually also used by network ad administrators as the packet analyzer or network traffic analyzer so we can use Wireshark as a forensic tool basically in this tutorial we shall be using Wireshark for the same process so this part one of this um, of this tutorial shall be as short as possible so what we are going to do is to come up with the captured packets and create some scenario because the scenario here is um, a computer was affected by a malware so we need to investigate how the malware got into the computer and in what different ways uh, the, 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 the malware infected the device through network forensics so in this tutorial let's um, let's go to the to the folder where the 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 malware could be uh, extracted from the network so that we can be able to see how to come up with the malware from a network and then try to check the behavior of this malware on the on this network so now we have got the ip address for the affected machine so we are going to check the traffic to or from that machine so that we can be able to identify some different and juicy information as far as the malware is actually concerned so this will be useful basically when you're doing malware analysis or network forensics in order to see how you can try to investigate and then come up with a solution up to that as part of the uh, instant response team i think it will be helpful very much or as a network administrator so let's open up a terminal right here and then if ever we we are here we can use t shark but i like wireshark currently so what uh, i will just wireshark wireshark scenario so so there you have wireshark um fired up so we've got as many packets as possible you can see so what we have is the ip address so what we want is the ip um dot address which is this one this is the ip address for the computer that we want to see the traffic to and from that machine so as we just set our eyes on wireshark then we can be able to see that um we have got the the russian website right here and if you come to the info column then you can see a get request to pasca.exe through HTTP request. So what we are going to do now is that uh, let's um, try to follow the TCP stream right here so we can be able to see if ever we can be able to carve the, the, the executable from the network or from the network on the fly. So let's try to see. Let's follow TCP stream so um let me check all right so we have got this nice looking uh, information right here so what can we suspect right here we can see that there is a get request here and the host but if you can see right away there is no um there is no uh, user agent because browsers during the the request that you every request that you make on the web interface they have to leave their their footprint right here to show the user agent that was actually used to get to make this get request so this makes us actually suspicious so we can see that there is an executable file right here because of this mz uh, signature because this signature is Mark Zibo, who is the former Microsoft architect. If you can come to to this right here, let's open the internet um, browser so that we can see 
mz signature signature so in the portable executable you can see mz as um mark zebo let me check him does m ms executable so you can see that is a signature based on microsoft uh, executable files so let's let's um, waste no time so what we have to do to cover this executable on the network is that we need to we we need to cover all the information right here you can see that it's actually unreadable but i'm going to show you how we can be able to cover it successfully so now we've got the yeah let's take it from here so we can be able to see now let's take it as a raw bytes then we will have to save this information as let me see all right so let me call it a suspect 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 where yes so i will not um i won't include any file extension right now so let's try to check suspect where so let's come here then we can see that this is suspect where in order for us to see what type of a file we can try to utilize the file utility in linux if we can file suspect then it will tell us it's just data because um it cannot identify whether this is actually a software or not so for that matter we will need to use the hex uh, hex editor or such as uh, ghex or hex editor hex edit in linux so i have ghex right here because it helps me very easily to to edit the the, the 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 software or any file at byte level so for now let me let me minimize all this all right so we can take suspect where right here so after we take suspect where right here what we are going to do is that we will have to delete all this information but uh, make sure that from the signature right here everything is fine so how are we going to know that this is the start of the program let me say to you uh, for you to understand these signatures at byte level uh, you can go to different websites that have the different file signatures that will show you so if the file is an executable or it's a dll or any other microsoft related um, uh, executable file it will have to start with mz that is mark zebo that we talked about earlier so the bytes of that has to be 4d 5a which must be this 4d and 5a and we also know that the http headers end with od o i mean 0 d 0 a so these are the hexadecimals for that so for us to be successfully trying to check whether this executable is will, will work for us let's try to check let's edit and let's cut this so we haven't cut it uh, the good way but we can come here let me come here and uh, try to cut this then cut so we have just cut it successfully so let's name it suspect where one sorry so we have got save as uh, suspect where one so we don't have to include something dot uh, file extension but if we do this and then we come here then we can see that linux itself has just identified that this might be a windows executable file 
Um, like me, if you want to, to, to know quickly how you can do some quick analysis using virus total, or if you want to do code analysis, then you can touch PE Studio or you can touch Kidra. So um, we have suspect where one, so we can try to check the the signatures for this uh, file. Uh, not the signatures, but the <coughs> the the hashes for for this suspect where one. So let's MD five MD five sum suspect where one. So we can see this um, and put it in your in your report. And let's also try to check for SHA one. Um, SHA one and SHA one sum suspect one. So we can see see SHA one hash. And let's go to SHA to fifty six sum suspect where one. Then we can see all the hashes of this. Um, nearly three hashes of this uh, this file so for that matter what we can do now is that we we have to to put this file on virus total so we can see whether the analysis uh, has been made on this malware because we just suspect this executable so we need to check it on virus total so let's go to virustotal.com Let's go to virus, virus, total, so that we can be able to see whether this file is actually a malware or not. So now let's see, okay. So we have suspect one, all right. So now we can see that suspect one is Pask, it's a malware, and it is actually detected by 59 uh, antivirus engines. So for that matter, you can also try to doubt whether this malware, and try to check what might, it might be have been doing on the on the on the network or on the different computers, including the victim machine. So now. We can see we have confirmed that this might be a malware or you can analyze it by yourself before putting it to virus total so now what we are going to do is to go back to wireshark and after going back to wireshark so all right sorry all right so we have saved it now what we are going to do is let me remove this so let me ip all right so we have to try to to see what type of traffic this malware has been generating so to do that we will need to add more queries so let me try to end um, So let me search for TCP dot string is equal to five. All right. So we can see some more DNS traffic right here, and we can just try to come down and then try to see. And all right. So we can see as many sin packets that have been sent through a short period of time uh, there is no arc packet right here this implies that if there are a series of many sin packets at shorter time if you are new to malware analysis or to malware traffic analysis this implies that there might be a denial of service or a persistent botnet that was actually taking place right here so for now that we can be able to check that um, there might be some botnet activity inside this malware 
so we need to check which domains was it connected to during its runtime in the PC. So for that matter, we will need to try to check uh, to add some more query right here so that we can even see maybe how it actually took place, what was actually it redirecting the user to. So for that reason, we will need to try to add more, more query right here and HTTP dot host. So we can see that it was actually uh, trying to come with with the with, to connect it to these uh, different random domains that uh, you can see that okay there is this one and if you saw that before it was actually trying to generate as multiple domains as possible on this query. Let me try to show you. Yeah, then you will be able to see. Then you can see that there are different. So this is the botnet behavior. If you are new to to malware traffic analysis, so now that we can, um, sorry, all right, um, HTTP dot host. So we can see that it was actually trying to redirect the user to this domain. So for us to try to check, we need to follow the TCP stream so that we can be able to see what actually took place forensically right here. So for this reason, what we can do, um, we can try to access each of these packets. Now we will try to see what information we can be able to have right here so we can see that okay let me see so we can see that okay this was actually connecting through port 18 so for that reason that means there was uh, a browser involvement right here so maybe it was a redirect so let's try to check from uh, follow TCP stream then try to see okay there is not more information and if we can come to uh, let me check uh, let's try to follow TCP stream okay there is uh, more information right here okay let me okay so we can be able to see a get request right here so that we that makes us uh, see what actually took place okay so let me remove that and um, let me just escape that all right so let me all right so let me come here and then all right so we can see that Um, there is this uh, buyer.html so on the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to check what happened hereafter if you like this video please smash that like button or pre please press subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get the part 2 of this video thank you guys for watching peace